Hello and welcome to this session. I'm Kevin Otieno. President William Ruto has ordered that the proposed tax on content creators in the controversial Finance Bill 2023 be dropped as he praised the youth presently occupying the online space for doing a good job in fending for themselves. President Ruto particularly singled out high-flying content creators Timothy Njugush Njuguna and Eddie Botita, whom he commended for blazing the trail for many other young people in the sector. According to the head of state, the two content creators, as well as others within the same realm, have found success online, courtesy of a partnership between YouTube and the Kenyan government, which has enabled them to monetize their work. As a result, the president went on to state, albeit on a light note, that Botita and Jugush could possibly be making more money from their work online than he does occupying Kenya's top seat in the House on the Hill. He hence directed Parliament's Finance and ICT Committee to take a second look at the clause on taxing digital content creators in the proposed Finance Bill 2023 and loosen it up a little bit for the youth to keep earning a decent living through their crafts. The Finance Bill 2023 had proposed, among a raft of other issues that came under heavy criticism from the public, a 15% withholding tax on income generated from digital content. First Lady Rachel Ruto has called for more use of bicycles to promote clean and sustainable mode of transport in the country. Speaking on Friday at State House after receiving 283 bikes donated by South Korea, Mrs. Ruto said cycling is healthy, affordable, and environmentally friendly. Mrs. Ruto said more focus on cycling will help achieve zero carbon emission by 2050. She further explained that bicycles will help in timely transportation of goods to markets. The First Lady has been leading in Share the Road campaign to promote cycling as a safe and sustainable means of transport. South Korean Ambassador to Kenya Ho Seung Hwang praised the noble role played by the First Lady in uplifting the vulnerable. Mr. Ho Seung noted that cycling symbolizes freedom, health and active living. President William Ruto has come out to defend the proposed housing fund while reiterating his past remarks on borrowing Singapore's model to actualize the affordable and decent houses for Kenyans. Addressing the press at State House during the Presidential Economic Dialogue on Value Chains on Friday, President Ruto lightly quoted opposition leader Raila Odinga's past utterances that Singapore was once the same level as Kenya at independence. In the same way, the head of state added that Singapore was once a slum like Kenya's Kibra, but has been able to give a new face to the country's housing sector by making difficult decisions. He thus compared Kenya to the Asian country, saying we ought to make the same decisions for us to move in a similar direction. The president consequently condemned Kenya's nature of not being risky with decisions intimating that he was getting impatient with indecisiveness. He therefore urged the nation to embrace making tough decisions in order to achieve great results. During Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Lung's visit last month, President Ruto said that Kenya would borrow notes from Asian country from the Asian country while implementing the affordable housing project. On to some international news now, and at least a hundred people are reported to have been injured after two trains collided in India's eastern Odisha state. Nearly 50 ambulances have been sent to the scene, according to the state's chief secretary. It is feared that a number of people have died. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi tweeted to say he was distressed by the incident and his thoughts were with the bereaved families. Twitter's second head of trust and safety under owner Elon Musk has resigned, according to reports. Ella Irwin took the post when previous head Yoel Roth left in November 2022, a month after Mr. Musk took over the company. The head of trust and safety is tasked with content moderation, a topic which has come under the, the spotlight since Mr. Musk's takeover. The BBC has approached Twitter and Ms. Irwin for comment. 
She confirmed to both Reuters and the Wall Street Journal that she has stepped down. The reason for her resignation is unclear. However, it comes a day after Mr. Musk publicly criticized a content moderation decision made at Twitter. He called the decision to limit the visibility of a video over allegations of misgendering, quote unquote, a mistake by many people at Twitter. Musk announced last month that Linda Yaccarino, the former head of advertising at NBC Universal, would become Twitter's new chief executive. She has not yet started her role. And Bill Cosby is facing a new lawsuit from former Playboy model Victoria Valentino, who says he drugged her and sexually assaulted her. The 80-year-old says Mr. Cosby raped her in 1969 after she had dinner with him. Mr. Cosby was freed from prison in 2021 when his sexual assault conviction was overturned. Ms. Valentino filed the civil suit under a California law that has temporarily lifted the statute of limitations in sexual assault cases. In the lawsuit, she alleges that after ingesting pills Mr. Cosby offered to her and her friend, Mr. Cosby took them to her nearby office. There, she says, she became unconscious and was assaulted after waking up. She told Mr. Cosby, quote, unquote, I want to go home now, according to the filing which adds she was incapable of consent and physically helpless. Ms. Valentino was seeking unspecified damages, court and attorney fees. The BBC has reached out to Mr. Cosby for comment. In a statement, Ms. Valentino said the trauma the 85-year-old inflicted on her has affected, quote, unquote, not only me, but my children and grandchildren. At least one person has been killed when a massive fire swept through an eight-story building in Rome, Italian officials say. Nine people were injured in the capital's eastern Colli Anien area. Rome firefighters say they had managed to bring the flames under control and were inspecting the building in case people were trapped inside. Six teams were involved in fighting the blaze that earlier engulfed scaffolding and reached the seventh floor. A thick column of black smoke was earlier seen rising over the city. The cause of the fire, which started at about 14 hours local time or 12 hours GMT on Friday, is being investigated. The body of the victim, reported to be a man in his 40s or 50s, was found in the building later. A local councillor is quoted by La Repubblica newspaper as saying the building is now unstable and more than a hundred residents are homeless. And social media and messaging platforms have been blocked in Senegal after unrest erupted over the sentencing of opposition leader Osman Sonko. At least nine people were killed when Sonko's supporters clashed with police in several cities on Thursday. Sanko was not in court when he was given a two-year jail term for immoral behavior but cleared of rape charges. The justice minister said he could be arrested at any time and police are surrounding his home in the capital. His supporters fear the conviction could prevent the 48-year-old politician from contesting next year's presidential election. Hundreds of officers are blocking his supporters from reaching his home in Dakar and even his lawyers have been unable to visit him. When the court handed down its verdict on Thursday, Sanko's pastive party called on the people to take to the streets. Interior Minister Antoine Félix Diom said the government had imposed restrictions on social media to stop the quote-unquote dissemination of hate and subversive messages. People are upset about the move which is affecting popular apps like Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, Telegram, TikTok, WhatsApp, and YouTube. They can be accessed using a virtual private network VPN, but not everyone is aware about such software and how it works. Several districts of the capital saw clashes. Some of the worst confrontations were at the university campus in the city center, where police fired tear gas as vehicles burned and black smoke billowed over the area. Many businesses closed and some remained shut on Friday. 
And that's the latest from me, Kevin Otieno.